Hello and welcome. This time we're talking about measuring strain. This is done with a so called strain gauge. Yeah. In German it's a Dehnmeshstreifen. Or DMS. It's often abbreviated. Strain gauge. How is this working? How is this working? How does a strain gauge look like? Yeah? Strain gauge. This is the surface where I want to measure the strain. Okay. Then I do have some adhesive, adhesive thing underneath. Yeah? I have to glue this. Yeah? So this is the glue. I mean it's not a sticker or something like this, because we really have to get sure that whatever I now explain, what we are gluing on the surface, yeah, that this is really sticky, because it has to make the same movements as the surface. Yeah? The same strain must be transferred to the strain gauge. So this glue has special uh, it's not it's not like a sticker. Yeah? There is glue. Huh? Then there is a foil huh? which is carrying all this. Huh? Trägerfolie. Yeah. So there's a base foil yeah, made of some material, yeah. some sort of film, a carrier film. Yeah. I'll call it carrier film. This one, the carrier film. On this carrier film, there is the so-called measuring grid. This measuring grid is very thin, very thin. It's made of some special material. Yeah. It's melted, it's steamed, and it will then condensate here on a special form. This is the grid. Yeah. This is the so-called measurement. There's an E missing, always the same error. Measurement grid. Okay, measurement grid. The thickness is just some micrometer. Huh? Just a micrometer thickness. And then there's another film covering this. This is the cover film. That's it, yeah? <laughs> now you know everything. <laughs> no, not everything, because around this, yeah? Maybe I should mention, if this is coated, this material, so if there is some lacquer on it or some, some sort of coat, I have to get rid of this coat. This really has to be glued to the blank material, of course, yeah? And to protect this, there is then usually some silicon or other stuff around this to protect this uh, strain gauge okay this now tells i guess it tells you not really a lot of things yeah so i will make another drawing from the top okay? from the top this thing looks like this there is this foil film we can usually look through this, yeah, and then I have two pads where I can solder my connection lines, yeah, and then there is the measurement grid. Yeah. Looks like this.
measurement grid, yeah, like a snake, yeah. And usually, yeah, I will now even paint it a little bit, yeah. Usually, the thing which is in length, yeah, so these areas, these areas, they are much thinner than the one who are normal. So these things here, they are bigger usually. Yeah. Mm, does not look too bad. Yeah. This is how it looks like. Yeah. These are the pads here. Connection pads. These two things, yeah. This here, only the thin part of this small wires, which are very, very small, this is called active. Active length. Okay, this is called the active length. Yeah. This is how this is looks. How this is looks like. How this looks like. <laughs> this is how this looks like. What is happening there? What is happening there? What I'm measuring? Yeah. If you have, if you have a piece of wire, yeah, then you apply force to it, strain it, yeah, then this wire will get longer, of course, and it will get thinner. Okay. So here is my original length, and here is my original length plus my delta L. Yeah? And here, this is my original area, and this is my new area. Okay. The resistance of a conductive material depends not only on the material, but also on the form. Yeah. So the resistance, the resistance is a function of the material, specific resistance of the material, multiplied by the length and the area. Okay? If the length is getting bigger, R is getting bigger. If A is getting smaller, R is getting bigger. This means whenever this strain gauge is stretched, all those little lines, conductive lines here, they are stretched as well. They will get longer and the area is smaller. This means this here will change its resistance according the strain okay and this is exactly what we want to to measure okay that's it we just have to measure we just have to measure the resistance of the thing here okay? and then we know how much strain is applied so we will receive a change in resistance yeah and this change in resistance compared to the original resistance yeah? is a so-called k factor yeah multiplied by the strain yeah and this k factor here this depends on material of the grid, of the measuring grid. Yeah? There are different materials out there. Yeah? Some do have benefits. Uh, some, of course, there are always benefits and not benefits. Usually we can distinguish between metallic and semiconductor. Rule, let's 
would say, yeah, metallics are usually very linear, yeah, and semiconductor are usually very high K factors. Okay, so for instance, metallic, there is for instance constant n, yeah, it's a it's 2.05 or something like this, yeah, or nichrome, yeah, 2.2. Yeah. Or or platine wolfram, yeah, four point zero. Platine six point zero. This is a metallic, yeah. Semiconductor case, semiconductor case, yeah. So silicium there is from eighty to one hundred ninety, yeah. Much higher than metallic, you see. But you see, we can only give a range because it's not linear, depending on the stretching. I have to have another uh, other thing. So there are these two possibilities. The semiconductor provides superior sensitivity. Okay, 80 to 190. It's a real high sensitivity, but it's not linear. Yeah, metallic provide quite linear things, but it's not that the change in in resistance is not that high. Usually we wants to have linear things yeah so these ones are very widely used okay i show you now a small or two small of these gauches yeah? of these strain gauches it's a special form we will talk about this we will talk about this thing only that you have an idea how big they really are Look at that. Uh, working? Not working? Here we go. Yeah. There are two of these train gauches inside. Yeah. Yeah. This is how big they really are. Yeah. If the connection pads, there's even two strain gauches in one. There are also special forms with three strain gauges in one, like this here. Yeah. And of course, this type of strain gauge. Yeah. And if you look at the case, if we have a look at the case, we can see exactly, exactly. Uh, what I told you, yeah, there is the resistance, yeah, so this R0, 120 ohm plus minus 0 0.2 percent, yeah. Then we have the K factor, 2.04, so it seems to be a metallic one, yeah. There's a temperature coefficient, we will talk about this, yeah. And yeah, there is some control ID and so on. That's strain gauges. Of course, we cannot just strain this gauge to the limit. Yeah. So the, the maximum there's a maximum strain, and the maximum strain is around for for semiconductor materials. We have a maximum strain of around one millimeter per meter. And here the metallic strains, the, the metallic things, constant down and so on, we have around 3 mm per meter. They're a little bit more elastic. Okay? So usually, usually we are using 0 0.1 to up to 1 mm per meter. This is the usual range where we use this, these strain gauges. Okay? The, the change in resistance is really, really small. Yeah. The resistance is also function of temperature. Yeah. This is why here on this on this uh, case there is also a temperature coefficient was written. Yeah. If it's during measuring, if this is changing temperature, this will overlap the change of the of the strain. There is a resistance change of the temperature, there's a resistance change because of this strain. I measure the combination, of course. Yeah. Also, 
if those things are applied yeah, and there's a temperature change, then this material here is also changing in size because of the temperature and there is also strain. Even if there is no mechanical force applied or something like this, it will measure already strain just because the temperature changes. Yeah. Of course, this is not wishful. Yeah? This is a systematic error and we have to, 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 to get rid of it. There are some special strain gauges out there which are for special materials. Yeah? But they are very, this is very a special application. Yeah? So if you have this and that material, use this uh, strain gauge, then the effect of the strain gauge, the temperature effect of the strain gauge and the temperature effect of the material yeah, will exactly compensate each other. Yeah, but you can see it's not that easy to, 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 to apply this, yeah, to get this. It's a very special, special thing. So we get to read, we have to get rid of these temperature changes in another way. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, the, the, the changes, this delta R here, they are very small and we have to get a special, special uh, circuit to, to, to measure those delta R, such small delta R. This special circuit is called Wheatstone's Bridge. Okay? For this video, I think it's enough. Yeah? Next time, we're going to talk about how to measure such small changes in resistance. Okay? Next time we are go to going to talk about, about this Wheatstone's bridge circuit. Okay? For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.